Yeah, I, I like that idea of uh, repeating steps one through four or whatever you suggested. Okay. Um, I think you guys are getting uh, the hang of that. Is this reaction making sense yes. to you? Yeah, I, over there is that other carbonyl oxygen stealing the hydrogen from that. Yeah, now notice at this point, this carbonyl doesn't need a hydrogen anymore. But this one does need the hydrogen to get the attack going down here. By the way, what's the name of this reaction that's happening here? What's the name of hydrolysis. this? Hydrolysis. Yeah, this is just hydrolysis. This should look very familiar to us because we're just hydrolyzing uh, this imide. Um, we've never hydrolyzed an imide before, but it's very similar to hydrolyzing an amide. This is an acidic hydrolysis. Um, well, under acidic conditions, we start by protonating the carbonyl. Well, now that this oxygen doesn't need the carbonyl anymore, we can transfer it down here. Now, this is not realistic. This oxygen actually can't reach around and get this hydrogen. But it's an acceptable shortcut in OCHEM, because uh, uh, what's really happening is um, maybe the sulfate is taking the proton from here, and then the sulfuric acid is putting the proton down here. Well, we wouldn't get much insight by drawing those extra steps. This is long enough the way it is. So it's an acceptable shortcut to pretend that the oxygen is reaching around and taking this proton up here. I think things are, things are getting long and tedious enough the way it is. All right, the important thing, though, is to see this will deprotonate and this will protonate. Um, this is why, uh, if you're going through the videos, you might have noticed there's lots and lots of videos about hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a really key reaction. It's important to be able to go through it quite quickly. Well, that's what we were doing here. Remember, what does hydrolyze mean? It means break with water. Well, that's exactly what we need to do here, right? We need to break the nitrogen off of our machinery here. So we're breaking these bonds with water. This is what the body does all the time when it wants to break polypeptides and polysaccharides down into smaller units for digestion. It uses hydrolysis. Uh, okay, so we've broken this off. Make sure you get the right number of hydrogens on your nitrogen at the end here. Uh, in fact, uh, let's see, did you guys ever finish this? What, what, what were our products here? NH2CH3, what do you think? Okay. What type of functional group is this? So in these conditions, should it be a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate? What type of functional group is this? Base, but we're in acid. Oh, amine, yes. Yeah, it's an amine, and we're under acidic conditions. So should this be an amine or an ammonium? Ammonium. So my answer here isn't right yet. This gets tested. This is the product. Under these acidic conditions, this is the product we get. Yeah, but you started in basic conditions. That's right, but then we added acid, so we're now in acidic conditions. These are definitely separate steps. If we were doing this as a synthesis, we'd have to number these as separate steps. So the base is gone, and now we have the acid. So under these acidic conditions, um, this would be the, the, uh, what we would get. So we have to watch out for that. That was the thing I warned us about earlier, that it's hard, it's hard to remember to write amines and carboxylic acids in the right form. So we've got to watch out for that. Because we're going to be doing lots of things under acidic and basic conditions. So you have to try to remember to put those in the right form. Okay, and we don't really care about this. This was just the machinery. So we've just broken up this machinery. This is the thing we were trying to get all along. All along, all we really want, cared about was the nitrogen and the alkyl group we were putting on. This was all just the machinery that we were using to deliver the nitrogen to the alkyl group and to dampen down the nucleophilicity of the nitrogen so it wouldn't overalkylate. We saw how resonance dampens down the uh, nucleophilicity here. All right, so these would be our products. Uh, let's see, a couple other points. We probably didn't want ammonium. We probably wanted an amine. So what could we do now to get this back to the normal amine add form? Base. Yeah, add some base. So that's very common. It would be very common now to add some base, and then the product really would be NH2, CH3. I'm running out of room, but if we added some base, then we would get the, uh, the normal product. This was just that machinery that we've detached. Again, the whole point of this was just to deliver the nitrogen to the alkyl group in a way that dampens down its nucleophilicity. All right, so there's actually a bunch of different ways we can break off the machinery here. One way we could use is acidic hydrolysis. But if you use acidic hydrolysis, you need another step where you add base in order to get this to be um, a, a neutral amine. Another approach we could have used here was basic hydrolysis. 
We could have used basic hydrolysis. What's the advantage of using basic hydrolysis? Well, then the amine would just pop out already in the form that we wanted, and we wouldn't need to worry about adding an extra step of base. What if you just started with H plus and H2O? Uh, started. You mean up here? Yeah. Uh, let's see. That wouldn't work because, remember, we needed the base to make this into a nucleophile in the first place. Oh, right, right, right. We need to add yeah. the carbon. Remember, the alkyl group wasn't even attached here yet. Mm -hmm. First, we need to add the alkyl group to the nitrogen. That happened here, and then we need to break the machinery off. So if it was attached, then you could just start with H plus. That's right, but then you wouldn't have needed to do the Gabriel synthesis in the first place. Yeah, but that's right. If for some reason they've already put you in halfway through when the Gabriel synthesis is almost done, then you can just do the hydrolysis. Okay, so we can just use hydrolysis here to uh, break this off. So we could do this under acidic or basic hydrolysis. Under basic hydrolysis, we would automatically get this product and under basic hydrolysis, we would get carboxylates over here instead of carboxylic acids. Um, and you can use other nucleophiles. You don't need to use water to push off the nitrogen. You could use other nucleophiles. The other nucleophile that's common to use here is this. Did you guys see this? This is called hydrazine. We could also use hydrazine. You should be able to see how that would work because the nitrogen can, kick, can attack nucleophilically just like the oxygen can. Um, there would be uh, So you mean you would add the hydrazine instead of the H2O? Yeah, instead of this. But you still add H+. Plus. Um, I don't know if you need an acid catalyst uh, for that or not. Um, this is a better nucleophile than water, so oh. you might not need a catalyst. Where's my book? In the textbook, they didn't mention the A catalyst for the hydrazine. Oh. Uh, I don't know whether they're being sloppy or whether you don't need it. So, uh, But anyway, we can use hydrazine here instead. And again, that would attack here. Oh, okay. um, so what can we use in this second step to break these bonds? The common things to use are acidic hydrolysis, basic hydrolysis, or hydrazine. Uh, normally, of course, you wouldn't want to go through this whole mechanism every single time, but I think it's good to see it once. I think this is an interesting mechanism because it shows off the addition elimination reaction that we worked on so much for carboxylic acids. 